Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank each of you for joining with us for Monday's Daily Bible Study coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministries. We have a wonderful lesson for today, the bronze snake. Amen. The bronze snake. Amen. And of course, we, we are still in uh, numbers and we're talking about Moses and we're talking about the people, the Israelites, and they're doing wrong. And so we are talking about the bronze serpent today. Amen. We're going to get ready to move into our lesson, but first we want to ask if anything you see it touches your heart, soul, or spirit, or you have any questions or comments, please uh, feel free to drop the comments below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. Also, if you would subscribe to my channel and join with us as we gather together to study and meditate on the word of the Lord. Amen. We're going to get ready to move into our lesson, but first we're going to have prayer. Amen. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father. We thank you for another day. We thank you for a day that we've never seen before. We thank you that you are God Almighty, and beside you, there is none other. We thank you that you are, are our all in all, we thank you for being with us, standing by us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask as we go into your word that our eyes be open that we see and our ears be open that we hear. And you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. As we go into our lesson, the bronze snake. You know, I want to ask you all, I, myself, truly, despise snakes just the sight of them on a picture just makes my skin crawl how do you feel about snakes they just really have never been something that i can cotton to in any manner and man let alone somebody keep them in their house as a pet but anyway, we're going to move into our lesson. We're going to talk about the bronze snake. Amen. Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9. And the scripture lesson text read, Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no food and no water and I will so loathe this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against you Pray uh, to the Lord that he take away these serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Hey Amen. This is a wonderful lesson. I really, you know, I, I'm enjoying this uh, lesson. I like uh, reading the Old Testament because there's so many. Uh, well, I like both of the Old and the New Testaments. You know, the stories is just so, uh, uh, they give so much knowledge and, and understanding. You know, as we look at uh, uh the, the, the people of the, of the Israelites here, we see they are doing it, as they say, again, uh, as it states in Sunday's lesson, they are doing it again. They are complaining, and they don't realize every time they complain, they get hurt. They get hurt. They complain against Moses, and they complain against Aaron, and they complain against God, they get hurt. And God is, you know, getting them to say, hey, I'm done. I did everything I can, I can I want, I'm going to do for these people. And and they are not appreciative of nothing. They cried and whined to get out of Egypt. And I got them out of Egypt. And now, no matter what you do, they are not satisfied. Do we walk like that at times? Not being satisfied with no matter what God do? Let us look at ourselves and make sure that we are not, you know, walking in that uh, pattern of not being satisfied with what God is doing for us. Amen. 
Uh, we're going to get ready and, and go into the lesson. Verse 4 says, Then they journeyed from Mount Hur by the way of the Red Sea to go a around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. I mean, as it as, as said, the Red Sea does not mean the Gulf of the Israelites that the Gulf the Israelites crossed in the escape from Egypt, but the portion of the Red Sea which we know as the Gulf of Aquaba. The way of the Red Sea, however, may be a route name as well. The Israelites might not have gone to the Gulf of Aquaba at this time. Now, as I look at that passage, I'm going, they're, they're, they're complaining about going uh, the way of the Red Sea. And, and to my understanding, it's because they're going extra you know, miles to get to where they're going. But they are whiny, they are complaining, they are scary, and God is blessing them to go away from the people that would attack them. But they're not satisfied with that. They don't know the reason, so he didn't give them all the details, so they going to whine and complain about going the extra mile. Amen. Are we complaining about doing the extra when the extra is actually for our protection? Verse 5 and 6 says, And the people spoke against Moses and against, against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and I was so loathed this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. God said, enough is enough. I, let the snakes bite them. Just let them, and oh Lord, that just the idea of snakes uh, uh, go to bed, and, and it might be crawling there in the bed with you. I mean, it, it's just an awful thought to me. Oh, goodness, that's awful. But, because I can't stand snakes. But, as we look at this here, you know, you're going to sit there and the only food that you have had was the bread that he supplied for you. And as I stated, you're scary at the drop of a hat. And so you thought you needed to go close to people where they could... uh destroy you because you hadn't been in no wars. You knew nothing about fighting. So if he'd have took you in that route, you wouldn't have survived. But him trying to protect you and give you a, 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 a substance that, that would uh, not only sustain your being, but would also be a blessing to your body to keep you from uh, having the, the, the ailments and the disease that many people had dealt with uh, because of the type of food or the too much of this or the too much of that, uh, 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 then we, 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 we is never satisfied. We're never satisfied. Once again, the people complained about their living conditions with the result that God sent fiery serpents among them. Many of the people died and many were dying. The children of Israel were wearied by a long march around the land of Edom. They speak discontently of what God had done for them and distrustfully of what he would do. What, what will they be pleased with whom manna will not please? Let not the contempt with which some cast on the word of God make us value it any less. It is the bread of life substantial bread and will nourish those who by faith feed upon it to eternal life whoever may call it light bread we see the righteous judgment god brought upon them for murmuring he sent fiery serpents among them which bit or stung many to death Amen. Verse 7, and they said, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the Lord, to the Lord. You know, this reminds me, if you listen to this over and over again, it reminds us of the Egyptians. 
when uh, God was getting ready to bring him out of Egypt and 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 he uh, 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 would go to him and he every time uh, Moses would uh, uh, would take away one of the uh, 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 the curses that was put on the Egyptians and they, Moses would come to him and they said, "Oh, pray to the Lord for us and 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 then you can do what He says." And then as soon as it's done, they they they, they lie. And this is what the, the, the Israelite does. It said, Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be what everyone, it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. Now, can you imagine? They're out here in the wilderness, and Moses got to build a, uh, uh, a serpent on a pole. It's not going to come up in a minute. It, it ain't nothing like the, the you know the tools we have today and and you can just boom and boom and, and it's there you bend this and do that and it's there no uh and, and then you got to get the uh, uh supplies no it wasn't like that it it, it was going to take much longer so while Moses is making the serpent for the pole i can only imagine they're still whining and still complaining they're not they, 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 we done went to Moses and, and he ain't nothing being done is what they're probably saying while he's busy trying to make the serpent that God has told him to make that will save them amen it is to be feared that they would not have owned the sin if they had not felt the smart or the sting of the serpent if they had not felt the serpent then they wouldn't even uh, uh, Thought the fact that they had sinned, that they had done anything wrong, because they never uh, owned up to them being in the, them being just wrong enough to stop doing it. It's not enough to, to to own up to it when you don't stop doing what you're doing. Just like if you repent, if you continue to do the same thing, that helps you none. That helps you none. God is not ignorant. We must repent and turn from our ways. And the Israelites, they must uh, stop crying and complaining and not do that. And God would not cause all these things to come upon them. But they relent under the rod. The rod of the serpent biting them is what they relent upon. When God turns them loose and let them allow them to go into slavery and all this, that's when they relent. That's when they see their faults and their misdoing. Do we have to go through the hard times all the time? And God made a wonderful provision for their relief. The Jews themselves say it was not the sight of the bronze serpent that cured, but in looking up to it, they looked up to God as the Lord that healed them. There was much gospel in that fact that when you look up to God, he's the one that heals us. Amen. And then one thing about this here, I can, I can only imagine within myself uh, them making the bronze serpent. It is stated further in the scriptures that some of them wouldn't even look up and live. Is you know we we too proud we that ain't gonna help me none that ain't gonna do me no good is you know the way we do it, amen. Let us be mindful of our thoughts and our mind. Let us that's why we are to keep our mind our uh, our thought in the word, in studying the word, amen. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked. At the bronze serpent, he lived. As we see in answer to the intercession of Moses, after Moses going to God and asking, him, don't, don't let the serpents kill all your people. He said, okay, put up a, a serpent on a, uh, uh, on a, on a, on a rod and, and have them to look up to it. And those that look to it will live. Like I said, uh, further in the chapter, it shows that they don't even, they're not even willing to look up to it. But as we uh, uh, know that uh, that is uh, the way we are in many things, we are not willing to stop doing what we are doing. Uh, it, we just can't do without our sin. 
Amen. God commanded that a bronze serpent of brass be lifted on a pole and promised that whoever looked at the bronze serpent would be healed of the snake bite. This incident was used by the Lord Jesus to teach Nicodemus that Christ must be lifted up on a pole, the cross, so that sinners looking to him by faith might have everlasting life. As in John uh, uh, 3, 1 through 16, the serpent later became a stumbling block to the, to the nation and was finally destroyed because the people began to worship the snake. In the days of Hezekiah, 2 Kings 18 and 4, as we see here, our Savior declared in John 3 and 14 and 15 that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whatsoever whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Compare their disease and ours. Sin bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. Compare the application of their, of their remedy and ours. They looked and live, and we, if we believe, we shall not perish. It is by faith that we look unto Jesus, Hebrew 12 and 2, Whosoever looked, whoever desperate despite his case, or feeble his sight, or distant his place, was certainly and perfectly cured. The Lord can relieve us from dangers and distresses by means which human reason never would have de devised. On that, the venom of the old serpent inflaming men's passion and causing them to commit sin, which end in the eternal destruction, were as sensibly felt and the danger as plainly seen as the Israelites felt pain from the bite of the fiery serpent and feared the death which followed. Then none, <clears throat> excuse me, then none would sh shunt their, shut their eyes to Christ or turn from his gospel, then a crucified Savior would be so valued that all things else would be accounted lost for him. Then, without delay and with earnestness and simplicity, all would apply to him in the appointed way, crying, Lord, save us, we perish. Nor would any abuse the freeness of Christ's salvation while they reckon the price which it cost him. Many of us today, it is so simple and easy for us to look to Christ and live, but will not. It's the same thing going on now. Amen. I pray you meditate on this lesson. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless you.